Okay, we are here with our student, Rita, to talk about working with expressions. Ready to go, Rita? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about distributing, factoring, and combining like terms. So let's talk first about distributing. So the distributive property, let's do a quick review of that. I know you've had this before. You're going to multiply a factor that's outside parentheses by each term inside the parentheses. So let's look at an example here. So here we have 5 that's outside the parentheses. And then how many terms do we have inside the parentheses? Um, two. Two, right? What, what's the first term? T. T. And what's the second term? Two. Very good. So, and there, a term is just separated by a plus or a minus. So we have to multiply this 5 by each one of the terms. Let's draw some arrows to make sense. We have to multiply the 5 times the T, and then we're going to have to multiply that 5 times the 2. Okay? All right. So um, let's go ahead and write that. So we have 5 times the t plus 5 times the 2. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And um, so what is 5 times t? 5t. And what's 5 times 2? 10. So can we simplify it to that? Yeah. Very good. Okay. So let's try another example here. In this one, we have to remember that there are positive and negatives here. So actually, let's do this next example in two different ways. So here we have a negative 3 times the quantity negative 2x plus 7. And we're going to go ahead and distribute. So tell me if this looks right. Um, yeah. Okay. So that negative 3 is multiplying by the first time which term, which is negative 2x. And then it's multiplying the, by the next term, which is 7. And the really critical thing here is that we're putting a plus sign in between because there was a plus sign up above and we just carry that plus sign through. Okay? Okay. All right. So now what's negative 3 times negative 2x and negative times a negative? Uh, 6x. Positive 6x. And how about mm -hmm. that negative 3 times 7? Negative 21. Negative 21. So then what we have is really 6x minus 21 because we have here the plus a negative 21, which is just like minus 21, right? Right. Okay. So you can see this one gets a little complicated with negatives and positives, but the key thing is to remember that arrow. Whatever is that... Um, the addition of subtraction inside the parentheses, you have to make sure and carry that forward or pay attention to it. So let's pretend that this problem was slightly different and do it here on the right-hand side. Let's pretend it was negative 3 times the quantity negative 2x minus 7 instead of plus 7, okay? Okay. So tell me what I should write here. Okay, so negative 3 times negative 2x uh -huh. is 6x. Uh-huh. And negative 3 times negative 7. Uh-huh is plus 21. Okay, good. So you you kind of did a whole bunch of steps in your mind at the same time, and that's excellent. So here, you once you get good at the distributive property, you can just write this as 6x plus 21. Let's go a little bit more slowly here, and let's just write it like this. So negative 3 times a negative 2x, and then minus mm -hmm. a negative 3 times 7. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You could have also said plus a negative 3 times negative 7, okay? Just as long as you're paying attention to all of the um, positive and negatives and addition and subtraction correctly. So now, as you said, that first term is going to be 6x, and that second term is going to be a positive 21. So you can see that these problems are slightly different because we had a different addition or subtraction symbol inside the parentheses. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. So... Now let's um, work with fractions on, on distributing this. So what would be 1 third times 9a minus 6? Let's see. What do we have to do there? Well, so we distribute the 1 third. So okay. One Does it look like that? Yeah. Okay. So 1 third times 9a minus, remember that minus, right. 1 third times 6. Okay. Now we can multiply each one of those terms. So what's 1 third times 9a? 9 thirds. Or 3a. 3a, yep. And then minus, what's one-third of 6? That's uh, 6 thirds or 2. 2, okay. So 3a minus 2, does that look right? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at some factoring over here in the middle of the page. So factoring is kind of like the opposite of distributing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with this same exact example that we had over here on the left-hand side, 5t plus 10, but we're going to pretend we didn't know that that was the same as 5 times the quantity t plus 2, okay? Okay. Okay, and so we're going to try to, though, move from 5t plus 10 up to that 5 times the quantity t plus 2. And the way that we do that is we find the greatest common factor of the 
terms that we're going to be factoring. So we have 5t and we have 10. What's a number that divides into both of those? 5. 5, and it's the greatest number that does, right? Right. Okay, so we can say the greatest common factor of those two terms is 5. And then what we can do is we can say, well, we know, therefore, that we're going to have some sort of expression that looks like this, 5 times the quantity something. That's what we're going to factor out. And if we factor out the 5 out of the 5t, what do we have left? T. T, good. And if we factor the 5 out of the 10, what do we have left? 2. So can we write this like 5 times the quantity t plus 2? Yeah. Okay. So basically, we've just moved in the opposite direction here to go this direction um, it, to get from 5t plus 10, get the greatest common factor, and turn it into 5 times the quantity t plus 2. Just went in the opposite direction of distributing. Let's do another quick example here. So we have 56k minus 32. So what was the first step that we need to do when we're going to factor this? Uh, find the greatest common factor. Okay, good. So what would be the greatest common factor between 56k and 32? Mm, 8. Good. Now you could have said 2, right? But that mm. that is a factor, but it's not the greatest factor. Even 4 goes into both of those, but that's still not the greatest factor. The greatest factor is 8, so that's great mental math on your part. So that's we can write that. So now, what if we what if we factor that 8 out of 56k? What will we have there? How many times does 8 go into 56k? 7k. Good. And how about of the, out of that minus 32? 4. Okay. So will it look like this? 8 times the quantity 7k minus 4. Yeah. Okay, very good. And if we were to apply the distributive property here, just to check, you say, okay, 8 times 7k, 56k. 8 times minus 4, minus 32. Okay? All right. Now let's go over here one last step, combining like terms. So like terms are terms with the same variables to the same power. So let's do a few examples to see what that means. So 3x and 5x... Well, if I have three x's and five x's, how many x's do I have? Eight. Eight x. And so those are like terms. We can put them together, right? Mm -hmm. So they are like terms. How about this one? 4p squared and 2p. Are those like terms? No. No, they're not. And the reason they're not is why? Well, one is p squared and the other is just p. Okay, perfect. So up here in our definition, we said they had to be to the same power. These are to a different power. This is p to the 1, even though we don't write the 1. And this is p to the second power. So those are not like terms. Let's try this one. 6xy squared and negative 4xy squared. Are those like terms? Yeah. Yeah, they are, because they both have the same variables to the same power, and that is xy squared. So these are like terms. And what we can do is we can combine like terms, okay? So let's try an example here. 3x plus 5x, you already said, is? 8x. 8x, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How about this one? 3x minus 5x. Minus 2x. Minus 2x. Good. Some negative numbers. How about this one? 5a plus 3b plus 10a minus 2b. So walk me through how you would approach this. Let's see. So to combine the like terms 5a and 10a, you add those. So good. it's 15a. Good, good. And then we can combine the b terms, yep. which 3b and minus 2b. Right, and how many would that be left over? Just b. Just b, so 1b. So so even though they weren't next to each other, you saw that you can combine the like terms of 5a and 10a, and same thing with 3b and negative 2b. And so does that look right? 15a plus b? Yep. Okay, very good. So this is some review for you, I realize, but... Basically, you can distribute, you can factor, you can combine like terms, and that allows you to really simplify expressions. Great job.